All right, folks, back with another video. Apologies for the severe lack of updates. It's been incredibly busy and uh, finishing the house and running the business, uh, my time's been taken up. But I'm doing a retaining wall, so I thought what better uh, opportunity than this to show you the retaining wall and give you a tour of the externals of where we are to date. I'll keep the internals up my sleeve for a, for a minute because I want to sort of get it finished and unveil it all in one. So I'm doing a little retaining wall today and I've decided to do it from timber rather than bricks because I ain't got to dig a foot in, get bricks here, sand cement, get a mixer and all the rest of it. So I've got to retain a bit of patio area. So I'll take you through that now. So as you can see, my damp level is a couple of courses below the door, pretty much where that um, storm drain is uh, to catch the downpipe. Pretty much there is going to be my patio level. So I've got to retain, I don't know, maybe 450, uh, maybe 525 of, of the patio and then it sort of grades down this way uh, as a natural sort of fall of the garden so simply I'm going to put a post uh, here I'm going to post post creek one in there I can't put it against the house on this elevation where them two um, closed board slats are because there's drainage running along there so I've need got to put it on this side here and then I'll put one this end and then i've got three railway sleepers uh, big bits of kit and i'll simply screw them into each post and then i will finish it off like this with the closed board on each side with a little rail so i've got a little bit of a basically a handrail to stop you know the kids falling off or the dog jumping over it or me when i've had too much to drink so i'll get this dug get the post in position and then i'll give you the grand tour of the externals um, and like I said, I'll keep the internals up my sleeve for another day. So without further ado, let's get digging. Right, so nice and quick, the two posts are in and set. Uh, so I've just got to wait for the post creek to go off. So one bag in each post, two posts, and then three sleepers, and that's the retaining wall done. So let's have a quick look. So this post obviously up against the house, and then I've strung a line through just to make sure it's square. Um, and then I've put the sleeper in between, so I know it fits. And then I've got three sleepers, so I turn it up the other way and I have three sleepers on top of one another, so they're nine inches. So should just retain my patio area, and then I'm going to just do close board on top. So I have to set another post against this one, but I just, just screw it in there just to pick up the rails, and then I'll do the same on this one as well. So I'll put another additional one here, and I'll close board it both sides, so it will be looking nice from from both sides and i haven't got to just look at rails on one side and, and not the other so not worried about them being level um, because i'll probably just work off of this height um, and cut the piece off of that one and um, and then have it running through level i'm not going to have a step in it or anything like that so just got to wait for this post creek to set a little bit that one i'm going to bolt against the wall as well but i forgot my sds drill um, so I'll bolt that one just for, for, for belt and braces and this one will be fine and then I'll probably just drop in uh, another support behind the wall on this side because you won't you won't see it this side so just to retain that patio I'll probably do it in the middle about where my GoPro is because this all tails off down where that paint tin is and, and, the, and the bucket so I'll just plumb these up now make sure they're plumb. Obviously, ain't got to worry about that one, but this one needs to be upright in both directions. So we'll put the level on that. As it sets, you can move it about a little bit.
Right, that is retaining wall done. So it is quarter past six. So I've probably got here about half four. So not long at all, really, nearly two hours. Um, not quite finished uh, because I let the post set and do their thing. Um, and then tomorrow evening I'll come and refix all the posts in position and just make sure everything's as it should be. So I will openly admit that I forgot to level up the posts and then I fixed the top rail and there's a fall on it. But then I thought, actually, I'm going to keep that because the garden naturally sort of falls away, that area. I've got a slight sort of slant running on my back fence line. Um, and I just thought, yeah, I'll leave it like that. Uh, and it saved me a bit of work. So top rail, bottom rail, and then closed board this side and closed board the other side. And then uh, these three sleepers act as retaining for here. So they end up, ends up one course below damp my um, sleeper wall. So perfect really. So it's cheap, it's effective. I think it's got a bit of character um, and sort of is a bit easier and less messing about than brickwork. So I'll give you a tour of the outside now. Right, I finally got a water connection date from Thames Water, which is the 18th of June and this is currently the 11th of June today. So it's been a bit of a delay, a bit of a nightmare really. They wouldn't give me a connection date until they inspected the trench. I couldn't really pull the water in the trench until I'd done some other work, a uh, significant amount of drainage in the front. I had to put a septic tank in, I had to put a storm drain in. So logistically wise, it was quite difficult to get that water in and get it inspected. So then they come out, they you know, poke their head in it and they go, yeah, it's fine. And then 10 weeks later, I get my connection date. So the, as I said, water on the 18th and then I've got the drop curb going in on the 24th and then I'm pretty much ready to go in. So bit of decoration, second fix carpentry, uh, sorry, finals carpentry, and then I'm good to go. So I've set a moving in date of end of July. So where are we externally? So as you can see, I've started turfing. I've just been doing it as and when, um, as I've had no water here. It's rained for months on end and then I lay the lawn and it stops raining. So the greener patch, my brother laid one day when he got rained off work, wanted to work, so he'd come up here and help me out. Uh, the new bit that's drying out there is the bit I've done recently. And you can see I've got 25 litres of water there, watering can. I'm going to water it tonight and then tomorrow take delivery of a brand new 1,000 litre water tank. I'm going to get it filled up here and then set a little sprinkler up. And then I've only got another week till the water and I think that turf will survive anyway. So this is obviously the back garden now. One downside of the air source heat pump is they're ugly. Don't particularly like them. Went for a lower fence down the back so I can see the trees and the squirrels and stuff. Found the old swing when I was doing the externals. So hung that up, it was saturated, been buried. So hung that up to dry. Maybe put that somewhere. Um, and then this is coming up around the side of the house. So I've had to stop my fence line just there for a minute because that is the additional piece of land that I'm purchasing. And the farmer just asked me if I could just hold fire just until it's legally and contractually exchanged, uh, which is fair enough. So for the time being, I'm only gonna run it up uh, towards the front of the, the plot and then return it into the house just so I can contain my dog. So Sparky's been in, still gotta give it a jet wash. It's a bit of a, a bit messy, weren't built in the best climate uh, and then coming out to the front so this is my technically a turning circle here or a turning area it's not um, parking spaces so uh, part of planning is because I'm off the highway we've got to be able to come in and turn around so I put all the edgings in I moved the entrance was here for, for the OGs that watch from the start the entrance was here where my truck is um, and the entrance is actually there where my slabs are. So I dug up the laurels from where the slabs are and I put them there and they're hanging on for dear life, but they're pretty hardy and I think they'll probably come back. So this is the bio disc, an absolute nightmare to put in. Three meter hole we had to dig. And then the ground here is brash. So I had to get a pecker and break through probably a meter of brash, absolutely horrendous. 
then we had to lift the tank in. You've got to then fill it with water. When you're backfilling it with concrete, you've got to do hand in hand. I've got no water here. I mean, it holds 3,000 litres and that's halfway. So I had to get that water ordered in, the concrete drop, dig the hole, drop the tank in, fill it with water, fill it with concrete. And that was, that was a challenge. But anyway, we got that done. Here is a bit of housing for the control panel of the septic. Um, so I've got to put electric and stuff into there and then I've also ducted out into my driveway just on the front there. So eventually when I get some gates and then I had to put in another tank, which is over here. So this collects my storm and then there's what's called a control flow chamber, which controls the amount of discharge that goes out into the culvert ditch uh, on the front. Um, which is again a bit of a nightmare same principle as the bio disc dig a hole fill it with water fill it with concrete at the same time a uh, bit of a problem when you haven't got water on site but it's coming together now it's nearly there so like i said water in a week drop curb the following few days uh, and then i can top the driveway which i do right at the last the knockings i've got a landscape and stuff around here complete the fence line and then internally uh, pretty much there just got to do the decoration, second fix, carpentry, um, and then that's it. End of July, set a goal moving in. And then I've got to get my existing house ready for tenants by the 1st of August. So there's some house I've got to complete. But hey, c'est la vie. It's uh, been emotional. Uh, it's been challenging, this one. Much more difficult building homes for yourself as opposed to other people. But it's a nice view from here. Or it will be. It's no Wembley, but needs a roll. But it's alright, it should survive. Uh, I'm going to do some sort of housing around the air source heat pump. And there's my retaining one. Which doesn't actually, see, looks nice with the little bit of natural gradient on it. Bifolds here, so they naturally open up against that retaining wall. Which again, has worked out quite nice. So... Maybe I should have been a chippy. Right, that's it for me. Uh, next update will probably be when it's finished and I unveil the whole thing and I can't wait to show you guys my kitchen because in my humble opinion, it's uh, a very special and very fortunate. There's been a lot of hard work and sacrifices to get to this point, but it'd be worth it in the end. So I'll probably see you at the housewarming. Thanks for watching. Please like, comment and subscribe. See you next time out.